let's get this party started. You ready for this? I'm waiting is on four things. I got my new body that I'm waiting for, my extended roof, my rear seat kit, and my new windshield. And that's it. And then this thing should be 100% done. By that time, I'll have the steering wheel installed, the light kit installed, everything else should be installed, just waiting on those parts. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, so I got this thing torn down. I didn't take video of that just because of the fact is uh, it's difficult to set up the camera and do everything like that, taking it apart. So I washed it, still looks a little rough, but it's clean. There's a lot of dirt. So there's an old underbody. I got the new one back there. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed. And then I'm gonna clean this. This goes under the skin of the front. I'm gonna get that cleaned up. I got Aiden helping me wash and dry it. Say hi. What are you doing? I'm washing it and drying this. You're doing a good job. So I just, I decided to go ahead and replace my underbody for the rear. It's this whole big black plastic piece. It's a whole unit. Reason why is because the other one I had, it was all scuffed up over the fender over here in that area uh, and on the other side. So I was just going to let it ride or try to touch it up with some paint, but I just decided to uh, bite the bullet, buy it. It did cost me a couple bucks for it more than a couple bucks at least that's brand new the front part of the golf cart's brand new as far as the uh, fascia the black uh, texture the uh, side rockers are going to be new they're not on yet i have some new ones here so everything visually is going to be new um, the dashboard is going to be installed i don't have that installed yet the steering wheel is going to be new uh, yes, I'm still working with this tight space in my garage, so bear with me if you hear a bunch of stuff in the background. So this is a new brow, lower brow. I didn't video removing the body, but I'll show you what you gotta do. So to remove this top part here, there's one screw here, as you can see. There's that screw. And then you have that screw there. One in the middle. And then one on the other side. So it's five screws total. And to remove this bottom part here, this, once you remove this top part, you flip it over. And then I think it's five screws in the front. All these nubs that are sticking up, that's where it gets screwed in from, from the bottom. So this comes off first. Okay, once again, I can't point to it with my other hand because I'm holding the phone. But this part comes off first. And then once that's off, you flip it over and take this off. So it's not that difficult to do. To take off this brow here, the, the part that actually held the uh, skin on, it's another four screws. And they're the, uh, the star screw. There's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so you take the, those screws out, take the brow, I always put my screws back in the hole so I know where they're, where they're at. So you, you would normally take the brow off, take the skin off, 
and then you take everything else off. But I did remove the seat kit, which is right here. And I'm going to be selling it. I was going to keep that as well. So it's, this is an extra expense. If I'm doing a new body. Uh, and then I did a new underbody. All the uh, texture plastic is new. The seats are new. The steering wheel is going to be new. The dashboard new. This, the windshield's new. And then I left this back seat kit that has a little bit of rust. Yes, I could touch those up with some black paint. Uh, I just felt like it's kind of I'm cutting corners. So I just decided to spend some money on a back seat kit. So I did not video this. It was a pain in the butt because with the back seat kit, you have the backrest here. And then on the front, you had the backrest for the front passenger or the driver or whatever. So you try to get between the two poles or the, uh, the support, the roof support, which is right there, upside down right now. It was kind of difficult. So you need to, you know, if you, if you don't have any uh, specialty tools, it's going to be you're gonna be fighting with it with a, a little wrench, but I did use this this tool right here, and I was able to connect, uh, you know, my sockets to that, and that worked perfect for those tight tight spots. So to remove this back piece, is six screws. You have this right here on the side. You got them on both sides, one there and one here. Then you have these two top ones, one, two. If you have a back seat kit, these two would be, you would screw in the back seat kit into these two holes. Without a back seat kit, I really don't know what goes there. And then you have these screws right here. One, two. Okay, so it's six. And then not counting this piece down here. So if we count the, this piece, then you got those two and the, these two. One, two. So it's four screws there. Uh, so the next step or my plan next is going to be to go ahead and start running the wires But before I run the wires, I do have a little bit of play in the, in the pedal So I think I want to go ahead and adjust the pedal hoping That the mechanism that engages this parking brake is going to work properly Because it seems like when I'm on a hill the parking brake does not want to engage so I'm hoping it's just a, a, an adjustment somewhere as opposed to me having to spend more money on another part. Once that's done, and obviously normally there's a that mat that's on the floor here. Once that is done, I'm going to just do the adjustments. It's just that right there that I would, I would adjust. Uh, but once this is done, then I would, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, work on running the wires for the light kit. So I'm gonna work on removing these wires. These went to the original light kit, which it wasn't a light kit, it was just some, you know, generic lights. So I'm gonna get all those out of there. To remove the body, I did not show this. This is the body. Very easy to do as well. It's just uh, four screws on the top here. You have one, two, and then you got three, Four. This is the top view, this is the back end, and that's towards the front, going around the box where your battery is housed. Everything would slide into this channel in here, but that's it really. And then you got this where, that's where your uh, forward and reverse switch would go. There's a bracket that goes in here on both sides, and that basically would allow the forward and reverse switch to screw into those holes and stay in place. This is obviously the, the way my back uh, rest looks. I'm assuming all carts are gonna be different. So the way you adjust these is you need two half inch uh, wrenches. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, uh, obviously I'm holding one because my other hand is occupied, but you get one half inch wrench here, the other half inch uh, wrench here, and you're gonna just loosen the jam nut. Okay, try not to turn this, just turn the jam nut. This other one is holding this in place. Once you move that and you could, and this is loose, you loosen up pretty good, you could turn this with your hand, it'll turn and it'll bring this in. A way to know whether you, how, how far you need to tighten it, is you just take a tape measure and you're gonna be at about two inches um, the, uh, from the bottom to this plastic, okay? So if it's at two inches and you're good to go. So I adjusted it according to, um, you know, to this this uh, method here. I did get this from Wayne 
can't remember his last name, but I'll, I'll try to put it up. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. There's a lot of useful stuff for you to learn. Uh, and there's a lot of guys on YouTube that tells you how to work on these these carts. All right, so that's done. That's everything's adjusted. Hopefully, this park and brake locks into place when it's on a hill. We'll see. I don't know until tomorrow once I try it out.